Welcome to Friedman Adventures, your home for fishing, food, and travel. And now, let's find your adventure on another edition of Friedman Adventures. Hey everybody, Phil Friedman here, and I'm with Sam De La Torre. He's going to show you how to rig up for bluefin tuna. I highly advise you check out this video also. Sam did a great job. It's something that you'll want to do. And now, without further ado, it's time for Sam De La Torre. Hey guys, so um, we did that last video on jig organization. Everybody loved it. But I did have a, quite a few customers come through and ask me, uh, maybe some more specifics on how to put the jigs together, you know, with the uh, split rings and the leaders, you know. So we, we figured out we want to keep them separate just to keep our, our jig bag in, in good order. And people can go back and watch the other video right, you right. did. You did a great job with that. Yeah. So th and that really more illustrated just how to be uh, more efficient taking your stuff on the boat so you can use it all. And I actually had guys that came down, bought a bag and said, you know, you're right, man. We've been fighting it. And yeah, I went home. I looked at my jigs getting ready for the season this year and yeah they're a tangled mess man i'm happy to hear that's so, great you know we're, we're just we're trying to help you know i mean yep. yeah we do sell the products here and they're great products you know but at the same time we're trying to solve a problem that we see developed right so now what we're going to get into is more uh just a follow-up as to uh, how to put the hooks on the jigs the leaders on the jigs using the split ring plier specifically the the one that we were talking about and we're going to show you a little bit of a, up close as to how it works and, and why we use that plier. That, that's a big deal, is why do we use that plier? In compared, because there's a lot of them out there, but but because we're using the heavy duty split rings, you need to have a heavy duty split ring plier. And so that goes along with that. And so uh, we're gonna show you some close up video here on how to put this together. All right guys, so on these split rings here, especially, uh, you know, owner and other companies too, they make like a regular duty and then a heavy duty. I, I will tell you that the, the regular duty is strong enough, but you know, if there's something stronger, we're going to use that one typically. And this is a, a regular split ring plier that you would find at any tackle shop, um, even, even us here. And it works good on small split ring stuff, like maybe something you would put on a you know, inshore type thing or lucky craft, or maybe even something that you would put on, on a, a cold sniper might work okay. But when you get into these big split rings that are strong, it just doesn't open them up and and yeah you can kind of try to pry them it, it just doesn't work man so you know shimano has this item here that they've had out for a few years and it's basically got a large jaw we'll show you that some close-up of that large jaw and it basically just really forces it open to where you can easily you see that just get get the split ring on there especially you're on a boat that's rocking around you want to have a plier that has some really good stability to it and is able to really move a big split ring around that's that's really why we use this plier so on the here's one of these assist hooks on the assist hook we're going to put a split ring on that like i mentioned in the last video we want to you can do this at home because you're just going to basically prep your assist hooks which that means is you're just going to put a split ring on it because that's how you're going to attach it to your jig so you would just put that on there like that Use your good split ring plier. And it's ready to go. So when you're going to start fishing, you could take one of these jigs here, take it out. Now you know you're going to fish one, this one here on your next stop. You're getting your stuff ready. Your assist hook already has a split ring on it. And now you're just going to put it right onto the jig. And, and like I was mentioning before, I mean, even having one hook is okay because that, that should still fit inside this bag. So even if you had your your jig with the one hook, you should be able to get it back in the bag there and, and kind of have it halfway ready to when you start fishing. And the the leaders that we that we make here, and once again, I know a lot of shops are, are, are making these and selling these, and it should be just like this, a nice heavy duty swivel on the one end, some heavy leader, and a big split ring on the other. And now this, uh, like I was mentioning on the last video, once again, is this is already going to be tied onto your rod. So it's already tied onto your rod. And 
it's already going to have a hook on it onto your rod so this is basically something you're going to be doing at the dock getting getting your rods and reels ready this is going to be your flat fall rod so that'll be on your rod like that tied onto your rod and when you're going to start fishing grab your jig out of your bag grab your split ring plier and you're just going to attach it to the top and now you're going to have a hook on the top and hook on the bottom now you don't have to have a hook on the bottom um, but like I was saying before it doesn't seem like more hooks is a problem as far as keeping fish on but that's how that's how easy and how quickly you're going to be jigged up and and that's what that's what guys were asking about um, you know so like I said and you can if you wanted to maybe even put two hooks on the bottom like uh, Taddy makes this one here with two hooks and maybe you just want to have two hooks on the bottom instead of one on the top so you wouldn't have that that hook on the top you would just uh, prep this guy here and then when you're gonna get going you would just once again just get your split ring plier and uh, now you got two hooks down there which, which I kind of like I just this is kind of the look I like have two big hooks down there and you could do that with one split ring and one and one motion so I, I like that a lot so that's pretty much gonna be up uh, that's it really I mean it's really easy to do and I, I think making it more difficult or more complicated is what we're trying to avoid so that's the way we do it and Sam after watching this it just seems like there's no better way to do it I mean we go back and we look at that tangled mess. Yeah. I mean, I have that tangled mess with my microphones. <laughs> yeah. You've got to clean up for yeah, me every yeah. day. It's a pain in the neck. Yeah. But when time is of the essence and you don't want your gear to get polluted with salt water and mm -hmm. inevitably it's going to be no good at the end of the season, man, this looks easy and fast and gets you on the fish. And I think all the connections are good. You don't have to worry mm -hmm. about losing a fish. Right, right. And we did have a guy who just came back from a trip uh, and used this system. He said, man, that was just way easier. And I will mention, just as a side note, this is something that's going on right now. Um, it, may, it might change in the coming weeks, coming months. But he did mention they're using a lot smaller jigs. So once again, being able to be mobile, you know, and, and, and be versatile, that's, that helped him out a lot, you know. So he had to settle going just how we did. And because he saw that guys were, a couple guys caught some fish on some smaller jigs, he basically went into his bag took off his big jig, put on a small jig, and in two minutes he was in the water, he was catching fish. They were using stuff from, he's, he, he said 200, 250, seemed to be like the sweet spot. Some guys caught some stuff on some smaller jigs, some guys got some stuff on some bigger jigs, but 200 gram to 250 gram jigs seemed to work really good. In the daytime he was even saying that um, 130, 160 gram was working really good, so even smaller. Daytime fish, the fish were a little shallower up higher in the water column. Says those were working good, but at nighttime, he said that made a big difference because pretty much the whole boat was set up with big jigs, which that's what we've been talking about the last you know, couple of years is the bigger, bigger. They, now they're 500 grams. I know I've seen some as big as 800 grams. Those things look like a crowbar. They're so big. But on this specific trip, uh, they were using they were using smaller jigs, and, and and not that the fish were smaller. I mean they were good grade. I think he said they were 30 pounds, up to about. They said they caught quite a few that were in the like the 70 to 90 pound fish. Um, so you would think, oh yeah, bigger fish, bigger jig. And not that you couldn't catch them, but he says that the vast majority of the bigger fish, or fish in general, were just caught on, on a medium-sized jig. 200, 250 grams seemed like, like the sweet spot. Awesome. And this is a gentleman who watched the video and then watched the did, video. and went yeah. and employed that method right yeah, away? Yeah, yeah. He, he just happened to be going out right That's away. Great. The, the same day, uh, or the next day after we did the video, he was going out. So he came in, bought the thing, got his stuff organized, and cut off all his leaders, and and uh, just had a couple leaders, how we, how we were showing you. and says yeah that was way easier he says guys were commenting on the trip about how that was something that just looked way easier and, and he saw everybody else was tangled mess he's like yeah this is this is a way to do it and sam uh just to make the point that i see every time i walk into island fishing tackle here in carson you got a whole staff including yourself mm -hmm. and you guys are always there to tutor to teach i mean I don't look at you guys as salesmen. I look at you guys as teachers. Yeah. And, and so if anybody yeah, has yeah. any more questions, they're welcome to yeah. come in. And they can get all that gear here, correct? Right. Right. And, and you know, 
granted this is something that we didn't do that like this a few years ago and we're all learning you know we, we don't we're not averse to to look at a new method if somebody comes in with something newer you know and, and it works better then we'll make another video about that you know but we really want to focus on what we feel is is the best way to do it at the time and, and that does change you know we're you know jigs change jig colors jig sizes so we want to make sure that you guys are are, are well informed in this case here this is going to be uh, something that's going to make you more versatile so no matter what happens you'll have you'll have access to all the right size jigs but if there's something else comes along better then then we'll do that and this bluefin is new to us i mean we, you know it, it's been five six years now seven years almost but it's still relatively new to the west coast so we're, we're learning like everybody else great stuff sam thanks again you got it Another great job, Sam. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching another edition of Friedman Adventures. We sincerely appreciate you subscribing to our channel, hitting that like button and the bell so you'll be notified about new content. Take care. Thanks again, my friends. We'll see you soon.